Welcome back YouTubers and today I've got a special watch review, a vintage quartz watch by Seiko. Many of you have seen these watches before. Uh, they came in a variety of uh, different configurations and styles. This is a, uh, a nice one. I uh, still have to replace the quartz, a little, little crack, but it's uh, it's got a bracelet. Here is a, more of a NATO style one. Um, I have a bunch of these that actually work. And uh, when, when Seiko first introduced this on the market, they did exceptionally well and they were extremely popular. I'll try and put up uh, a couple of advertisements that I, that I found on the internet. But these were extremely popular among the more affluent crowd because not only were there quartz, which as you all know about the quartz crisis, uh, people were starting to turn away from mechanical watches, they were starting to lose their luster, and, and these are becoming really popular because it still had the style and uh, and look of a mechanical watch, and, and, and it had a lot of the capabilities that you would get with a typical chronograph, but it didn't have that sort of, I guess, lame sort of LCD look that not a lot of people were really into. Uh, in addition to that, this watch had a lot of features, and this one is one that I'm particularly proud of. I've completely rebuilt it. Uh, this movement, I bought a bunch of these. This movement, it uses a 7T32 movement. Many of you who know this movement have a love-hate relationship with this movement. Um, they work very well when they're working, and I would say that they are actually quite reliable, but unfortunately, these watches are now about 40, 40 to 35 years old, and they're becoming harder and harder to find. Most people, even when something was slightly wrong with the movement, rather than rebuild it, they would simply just replace it. Um, it's kind of like what happened in the car industry when people, um, you know, rather than working on carburetors, they would just start, uh, like, I guess, how can I say? The electronic carburetors that you started to find in the early 80s vehicles, people would just cut out the electronics or, or they'd replace them. And it was really just a difficult time uh, during the transition period. So not a lot of people fixed them. They would just replace the, the movement altogether, if even that, uh, because there are a lot of these that are broken. People would put in the wrong batteries. People didn't understand. They'd try and fit something else smaller in there or something bigger, wrong voltage, and, and it would completely fry, fry the movement. And as a result, unfortunately, you have a lot of, of these that are broken, but you also have many of them that, that don't typically have rebuildable movements in them anymore. And you actually cannot get new 1732 movements anymore. Seiko, for whatever reason, has decided not to make them. They were selling them under the Epson brand, and there was another one. What a lot of people end up doing is when they find a nice watch like this, but that does not have a working movement, they will typically go and buy another watch that is maybe less desirable and they will take the movement out, pay somebody to swap out the hands and, and all that so that they can get this working again. But this one works perfectly fine. Uh, I was able to repair it. It didn't take a whole lot. Uh, it is a very nice movement. I really like it. So just a few things in the movement. At the nine o'clock, that is the second hand. Now the large second hand is actually the the chronograph so i'll get that started right now so you can see that it has a very nice quick movement and i i actually it's one of the things i really like about this watch it's a tachyometer trim ring around the inside it's under the crystal this is a mineral crystal it is not sapphire that was typically not used back then at this point at least not for these watches <clears throat> i'd have to say that these watches are probably about i'll have to look it up so i'll correct myself on on the video but these were about 300 dollars watches I'd say back in back in the early 80s, which was a really big deal. So now as this sweeps around, you'll see it then begins to tick down the minutes for up to 30 minutes at the 12 o'clock uh, dial. Um, some other things I can talk about this. This has a screw down, screw down case, um, case back. Not all of these were screw down. Some of them were, were snap back. I have a snap back one here. This is, um, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, I love this watch. Uh, the band goes really well. It's more of a, 
a sport model than it is a luxury model, but it keeps perfect time, works exceptionally well. Uh, I absolutely love it. But see, this one has a, a snapback. Um, replace the O-ring. It, it, it actually, it keeps excellent time. Spectacular watch, and I love this band, by the way. I put one of these also on my uh, Wenger C-Force. This one does have a, a screw back. It is water resistant. Doesn't say, but I would probably put it at about three, three ATM, three atmospheres. Uh, I'll put a chart up, but typically that means incidental. I don't know that I would even really shower with it, but if you did leave it on or you were, fell in the pool, it probably wouldn't be affected and you'd be able to, to save it if you dried it off pretty quickly. Um, I replaced all the O-rings in here and as well as on the back. And I also packed the crowns. There's two crowns. Packed it with the Seiko grease. Let's see if I can find that. This is not a paid endorsement, but I love this stuff. This stuff works really well. Uh, I put this on, on all the watches to sort of restore the, uh, the ability for the watch to seal. So as you can see, the, the watch is starting to take down the minutes. It's been two minutes. I'll stop it. And then I can reset it. forgotten how to use this darn thing there we go it's very cool it also has a timer an alarm which is very cool now listen to this i won't talk while i'm removing it so you can hear it okay and this is how you can set the time which i think is such a cool option and then it, it beeps again so that you know let's see no, i think it's only there you go. Let's see if I can find an example of a case back. Um, I think I've got one here. This is a similar one. You can see the speaker is actually, it's, it's very wild. It's a sticker on the back inside of the watch case. So this has a crystal on it, but you can see it along the back case there. There's actually a little, little speaker. You know what? Let me see if I can find a movement that's open that I can show that I can show you because I, I, I think this is like the coolest thing. I should have had one ready, so, but we can open this up and you can take a look. I take these apart all the time. It's, they're, they're kind of a pain in the butt to work on, but um, I do like to work on them. I mean, I don't say I enjoy it, but this is one that, um, let me see if I can, see yeah, it looks like this one got got some water you kind of see there's multiple motors so you have uh, a lot of coils in there um, and then i'll show you another one that is in another stage of disassembly this one i have to be careful of because i'm working on it as we speak though i put a plate on top of it but i'm gonna have to remember how to i have a video where I put these together and take them apart. There you go, so you can see all the gears. I will tell you what, these are far more complicated than working on a simple uh, mechanical watch. I I don't care uh, how much of a fan of mechanical you want, watches you are, I am too. There is no complication that is this complicated <laughs> as, as a, uh, a Seiko 7T32 watch, but I've taken enough of them apart that I, I have a pretty good idea of, of how to fix these. But I am not a fan of, of working on them, I will tell you that. But I do I do do it, and I do enjoy it when it's working. <clears throat> um, there's a very... The manual, I will say, is actually quite interesting for this watch. Um, it's it's pretty huge. And, and actually, just to be fair, in case you found this and you're looking for how to set it, I will include the manual at the bottom. It's a PDF. Um, Seiko has it on their website, but uh, it, it goes into detail on how to adjust the different hands. Sometimes these hands get out of out of order. So like the, the second hand and the minute hand at the top at the 12 o'clock and the large second hand will be off when you reset it and they'll go to some other point. That's typically if you remove the hands or some such. And there's a way to adjust that by by pulling out the hands to certain certain um um, you know, step one, step two, same with this one, and then you can adjust it. 
<clears throat> Let's go check out the loom, see how that looks. It's not bad for a 35 year old watch. It still, still holds its charge fairly decent. So I will be selling this watch. I do like this watch. I've worn, worn it a couple times. It has a brand new Speedle strap. Um, it's gold plated, stainless steel, <clears throat> 20, 20 millimeter strap. I have a big wrist. This is my Ingersoll, you can kind of get the idea of the size, size difference. It's still very decent for, for me. I have huge wrists and I have massive hands. I'm, I'm six foot three, um, large guy, not, not, not heavy, um, kind of thin, but just big bone and stuff. And it, it fits pretty well. Let me go ahead and measure that so you can get a good case width idea. 37, so I'd say a 38 millimeter case if I'm measuring this properly. Yeah, so 38 millimeters. Uh, I'm not sure really what I'm gonna sell this yet for, but it's a very nice watch. I'll put a couple of them on. I'm not gonna sell this one. I love this one, but uh, I just wanted to include it. I've got a couple others that I'm working on that will be up there soon. I don't know if all these I can get working or if I'm gonna put in the effort I have so many movements, kind of getting tired of working on these. Um, they're honestly not, it's not worth, it's it's probably not worth the effort for me to fix all of these. So I'll fix some of them and then just kind of move on and blow out the rest. Uh, this movement was also used on a lot of different watches. This is a Chase Door Pilot Commander, very cool watch. Um, anytime you see multiple crown, uh, two crowns, and uh, multiple points, that's a 7T32. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any rec uh, watch review recommendations, please leave a comment below and I'll be sure to uh, investigate. Thank you very much. <clears throat>